Hi everybody. Um, today's video is going to be about bathing your dog. Um, as you can see, Amadeus has a pretty long curly coat. Um, he has been prepped a little bit, uh, meaning I've brushed through, um, done a little bit of pre-clipper work uh, so I can get his face nice and clean. Um, the purpose for this video is to show you techniques for bathing your dog at home. Now, um, everybody is home for a period of time, um, keeping some uh, routine in the home care of your pet is important, and you can use this anytime in between professional grooms as well. The other purpose uh, for this video is to show why you're not aware of what you could be doing to the underside of the coat that's causing matting. Um, I spoke previously in a video about what are the causes of matting and how it happens. Um, one of the main things that we see in a professional grooming shop is people say, oh, well, you know, I brush my dog and, and the type of matting and the way the mat looks is all telling as to how the mat was created. Over the years, I have been able to identify bath mats. So, what a bath mat. First, we're gonna wet on the day's down. <laughs> so, I like to start at the back of my dog. get them good and wet because he's going to sit down. I want him to be comfortable. You want your dog to be comfortable at home too. Now, if you notice, when I am wetting down these long, this long coat, I'm wetting down in the direction that the coat actually grows. So it's following gravity. I want to get deep in the coat to get him wet. Obviously, do not want to use hot water. Um, you want lukewarm. Kind of think of uh, testing a bottle on your wrist um, for heating up a baby's formula. Um, you don't want it to be scalding. It has to be warm, obviously. Um, to get it real clean, um, but it doesn't, I mean, on a hot summer day, even your dog with, from the water hose outside in the backyard is perfectly fine because it's hot and it's actually very soothing, um, but with the weather being unpredictable here, we use warm water. the water gets in the ear. So if you see, I'm uh, cupping the ear so I don't get any water in. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I am wiping the water, excess water away from his face. This doesn't guarantee he won't shake, but it will minimize the need for it. Okay. Good boy. So, I've pre-mixed the conditioner. I like to um, condition and then bathe and then condition his coat. Um, and that is 
so that I can hand scissoring. Um, there's a lot of reasons behind which I, I won't get into at this point in the, with this video. This is more just the technique of bathing your dog. Now, if you notice, even when I'm putting this pre-mix on, I'm pushing it through the coat. I'm not scrubbing. Um, I want it to get into the skin. I want to get it deep. But pushing through the coat for this conditioner to move throughout the coat is um, the technique here. Turn around, please. Pull it back, back a little bit. Thank you. Um, and those who are curious as to why I keep grabbing Amadeus's face, his muzzle, it's a handle. So he's very accustomed to me holding here to guide his head. Once he is completely scissored and styled, um, I don't want to handle his coat anymore, so I would guide him by just holding his muzzle. If you notice, he instantly just stops. So he's waiting for direction, and I can move, and he'll listen. I started doing this when he was a puppy, um, but you can break a dog into it at any time, if you so wish. Um, it's important because if anybody's watched Westminster, you see all those beautiful dogs. Well, if you've ever, ever gone to a dog show, one thing I recommend you don't do is you don't walk up to a dog and start petting it. Um, they spend hours at shows prepping their dogs to go in the ring. They might even be in the ring for 15, 20 minutes, but they spend hours ahead of time getting their dogs ready. And you touching something that they hand scissored is the epitome of a insult. Um, and it could really ruin what they're trying to accomplish in the ring. So if you ever go to a show, don't ever touch a dog. Ask. Nine times out of ten, handlers who are getting ready to go into a show, you may feel that they're very put off by your request, um, but they really are working. So um, they don't intend on being snooty or um, insulted, uh, they just, you just have to understand um, really why they're there. And asking to pet a dog, their dogs are there to show um, and to title, and there's a very specific purpose. Um, so again, shows, don't pet the dogs. Um, okay, so I've conditioned him now with the conditioner. Um, and in here, I have a face wash. It's nice, foaming, easy to control. I can put all of that face. Yes. And this is designed for the face so I can scrub. Yes. And it won't burn the eyes. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean I want to sit there and stick it in his eye. I, I, you know, you wipe away any excess. Um, when you're washing a face. Uh, but this is designed to redesign the face, specifically. So I'm going to partially rinse off this conditioner now. Again, I'm just pushing the water through. Turn the coat. there's no splashing because I have the nozzle right into the coat. I'm going to actually, I'm going to actually let the water fall in between the eyes over the face. I'm going to use my other hand 
to wash it away. So can you do that again? Yes, you're gonna make a mess. So I've got the hose water coming through and I'm letting it fall into the face through the coat. So mainly it doesn't go up its nose. A lot of dogs, a lot of dogs will fight, especially dogs that have smashed faces. Um, they're short snouted dogs. Um, water going up the nose is very uncomfortable. So with a dog with a longer snout, I can always shield his nose when I'm doing that technique to rinse his face. But a short snouted dog, if you use that technique and their head is forward like this, the water falls away from the nose. And you still want to clear it so that way it doesn't have a chance to go up the nose. Good boy. Good boy. Yes. Okay, so I've pre-mixed some shampoo. So now the part everybody's waiting for. Yeah, we go. Now again, I'm pushing my mixture through the coat. I'm not scrubbing. I'm just pushing it through to get it into the coat. Now, a place that I do want to scrub is I'm going to scrub this butt. Yeah. Open palm hands to scrub the bone of any residual mess. And then into the leg. Again, I'm applying the shampoo into the coat. Um, now, I'm using my fingertips, and I have nails, to scrape or scratch this surface to get in but most importantly, these little feet, I am gonna scrub them and scrub in between these little toes, get all of that dirt, and the nail. The nail holds um, dirt and debris and bacteria, but when I'm done, I squish down and use my nails to, to kind of comb through uh, the coat. So what happens is in this bathing process, he might have something, you know, stuck in his coat. He rolled and he's got mud all messed up and use the water, warm water to break up the, that which is stuck in. And the shampoo acts as a slipping agent too. So this is the conditioner. Um, uh, and you can, I'm actually separating to scrub. I'm not doing this. If I were to do this motion or this, down at the skin, the hair follicles are all getting crisscrossed. Now, at this point, not too much of a big deal because I'll show you in rinsing, good boy, um, how we can kind of fix some of that. I'm going out of shampoo, so I'm gonna make a little bit more. Good boy. short-coated dogs, uh, Dobermans, even uh, double-coated dogs like your Shepherds, um, Huskies, uh, you use the same technique, only you could be more vigorous in your scrubbing. Now, I can do this here on his back. This fur is shorter, much shorter, um, but in his legs, where the fur is much longer um, to avoid any additional work in removing matting after the bath, I'm just going to squish it, squeegee the shampoo through the coat. I will scrub feet. I will scrub everything that's gonna be close to the ground because it is much dirtier. It does have more, his body is retaining more um, bacteria from just living 
and I want to remove that, and that's also where odor is. The other place is obviously, for, I have a male, so even though he hikes, sometimes he gets it on himself because he has a longer coat here in the chest um, and under the brisket, which is the under portion of the rib cage. His neck or the ruff uh, is the fur is the ruff. Um, his neck is much longer, so I'm squeegeeing it through from the skin up. Now I'm going to squish. See, so I squish through this longer coat to make sure that I've gotten every area that I'm looking to clean. Now, um, professional shampoos that we use in the salon, um, we do dilute them. There is a dilution rate. We um, buy them as a concentrate. But I can tell you that anything you buy over the counter in a retail setting, you want to dilute it. Um, it is labeled safe enough, ready to use. Uh, do yourself a favor, get more bang for your buck. Um, dilute the shampoo in a separate bottle, but whatever you do, don't leave it sitting once you dilute it. Um, it will breed bacteria. Um, you want to only mix what you're going to use. Uh, yes. All right. We have all clean. We boy. Yes. Yes. All right. So, rinse it. I'm going to start at the head. I'm going to work with gravity. Gravity is my friend. And as you see, I'm squeegeeing the clean water through the shampoo areas to help rinse the head. I know you know this. You have to do this. Head in the tub, please. Thank you.
Now, I am going to squeeze and squish, and I'm looking for any soap residue that was messed. Now, I'm not scrubbing. I'm just squeegeeing, going all over my dog. And at the same time, you can feel your dog underneath your hands. You know, is there a lump there? Is there a new bump that you didn't notice before? I mean, that's what we're looking for when we're grooming and when we're bathing. We're inspecting your dog at every turn, at every process. Um, let's say, actually, I do know he has. So he has a lump. He's got an old man wart, is what I call it, on the inside of his leg, um, on his front left. And because we're cleaning and we're bathing, you know, I just double check to make sure it hasn't started oozing, it hasn't gotten bigger. No, thank you. I really, I really had a bad thing. Um, the other thing is ears. You know, I'm in the tub and I'm looking. Um, is there any additional um, debris that I did not clean out before the bath? Can you sit? Of course you can. Thank you. So, um, so now we have a rinsed, bathed, clean dog. Now, for what everybody does at home, at this point, typically you grab a towel because you want to absorb most of the excess water. What you can and can't do um, are two very different things. When you have a longer coated dog, you're still patting. You're patting through the coat and I'm squishing like so, okay? Now, where his coat is shorter, I'll show you what most people are doing. No. Okay, what most people do is this. I wanna get all of that. I gotta scrub because that's what we do to our bodies, right? We scrub our bodies when we get out of the shower to get all the water off. Well, that, you can almost see, creates the fur coupling together and, and getting caught together. Then what you will, or what I know typically happens um, for the average pet owner is you've gotten the majority of the water off, I'm gonna go let them run and air dry. You just made all this matting, now you let your dog run and air dry, and then now you do that repetitively over the course of, I'll take an eight week client for an example. If I gave my dog a bath every week and did this scrubbing motion after the bath and let my dog air dry, when I would brush before the bath, all I'm gonna do is get the top of this coat. I'm not gonna realize that everything at the skin is what is knotted. And that's why I did the video for line brushing. Stop shaking, now it's dripping in the ear. All right, let me clean those up. So drying your dog actually is a squeegee process. Even with these longer coats, you're grabbing and squishing, squish, squish, squish. Squish. I'm gonna turn around for me. Turn. Turn. Hey, I know you're tired. Turn. Good boy. So, squish. We got a squish. And we're gonna talk all about the squish. Squishy, squishy. Good. Now there are other drying uh, tools out there. Uh, we have them uh, in our salon also. Very useful, very, uh, um, uh, this is a water magnet. So think of ShamWow. <laughs> Yes, I'm dating myself, when they first came out on the market for your car. Um, same premise, uh, it, you can start with it dry, 
Um, if it's wet, it absorbs even more water. But you can already see his coat is drying even better when I'm using this water magnet um, to absorb the excess water in the coat. Now he has pretty much no fur on his face, so I'm going to scrub his face because he's a little boy. Yes, yes, he's a good boy. Yes, he's a good boy. And that's a bath on a longer, curlier coated dog. Uh, the technique can be used on any dog. Um, no, don't. And um, if you have any questions, um, any comments, Feel free to leave them. Remember to like and share um, our video, but most importantly, please subscribe. Thank you.